Hey everybody, how's it going today? I hope you're having an awesome day so far. The day is just starting, starting, so the possibilities are endless. Um, today on Leadership with Laura, we're going to talk about um, how to be more visible in social media. And I, you know, I just first of all want to say that I am by far no means a social media expert. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to talk a little bit about tips and tricks and strategies you can use to get yourself more visibility and um, a little bit about the, around the mindset of that as a leader. And um, I think there's a lot of components to this, not just the actual, um, you know, posting or engagement with social media. Um, social media has become um, an essential part of our business, whether we like it or not. Um, and these days you really have to get a sense of your message because when people see your message, um, that's who they're, that's what they're going to relate you to. So as a leader, you want to be really sure and really clear about your message. So let's just talk about that for a minute. So <clears throat> when you started your business or whatever you're doing, um, you have your why, right? You have your mission, your vision. But if you could go into any kind of networking group or social media platform, would you be able to give them your 30 second about what you do? Okay. So to be more visible in groups, you've got to have something that's going to attract people and hook them. So the first part of what you want to do is you want to create a unique value proposition. Okay. And that's broken down into four parts. So the first one is the problem that you solve for people. Okay. And, um, for instance, like that could be maybe you, um, so I'll use myself as an example, cause that's the easiest one. Um, so, uh, the problem that I, I solve, uh, sorry, the people, um, the, yeah, the problem that I solve, sorry, I'm having a moment this morning. <laughs> the problem that I solve is um, people who are unclear about um, their path to leadership and what success looks like for them. Um, they're missing the structure around that. So um, <clears throat> I basically um, help people who are uh, mired in the day-to-day -day details, unsure of where they're going in their business and their leadership and need more clarity about um, what it looks like for them, the bigger picture and the path to where that's going, okay? And the second part is your niche. So who do you serve, right? And uh, a lot of the time when I come in contact with people, it's like, well, you know, everybody. I'm like, no, you don't serve everybody. And the longer you do your business, the more niche it will get. So you'll see that you start attracting a certain type of client like, over and over and over again. So pay attention to that, right? So the second part is who do you serve, right? And so for me, I serve successful entrepreneurs um, and small business um, people. Uh, so that's basically, and a lot of the time they're either just starting out or they're starting on their process. They've been doing it maybe a year or two, or they're extremely successful and they've hit that glass ceiling and they're not sure what's getting in their way. So those are the two types of people that I help because I noticed over and over again, that was what was happening, right? And those were the clients that I was attracting, okay? <clears throat> now we're going to talk about the transfer transformation. That's the third part. So the transformation is what people are going to come out working with you on the other side. What are they going to have? How are they going to be? What is going to be different? And, um, you know, what does it offer them? Okay, so the deliverable, basically, is what I'm saying. So for me, I help people who are unclear about their path to leadership and, and success through their business, um, you know, mostly entrepreneurs, uh, su successful entrepreneurs, and those who um, are just starting out for a couple of years, okay, and leaders as well. Um, so that's my niche, okay, and then, then my transformation is to get clarity on the path to what their leadership looks like if they were the world champion of their business. And then the fourth part of the conversation in your UVP is what give a few of the benefits of what your transformation is. So they can live the life they desire, help others do the same, and uh, earn the income that they not only desire, but they deserve. Okay, those are my three benefits, right? Um, so basically, you break it down into those four parts. Again, I'll say it again, the problem you solve, the niche you serve or the people you serve, um, the transformation you offer, and then lastly are, are one, two or three of the benefits that come out of that transformation. That, that is your UVP, and that's where things start. 
in your leadership. Now, once we have that, we can go into social media. Okay. You can actually do anything with this, right? Um, so what's important here is that you remember not to spam. Okay. So when you're in social media groups, and I'll give you an, why don't we, of the ones I use, I don't use all of them. I use a Facebook. I use, I use LinkedIn. I use um, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Right. Um, and so I'll go through what I do in each of them and how you, I'll give you my tips that I've used. There are lots of other experts out there who can give you that. But for me, for my leadership, I'm going to let you know what's worked for me. OK, so the number one thing that I want to talk about before I get into each one is visibility. So <clears throat> visibility shows up on a lot of levels for us. So it's not just about posting on Facebook. It's allowing ourselves to be visible out there in the world. So if you're not sure about that or you're worried about how people are judging you or if you're going to be judged or um, you're not willing to be visible and be seen, then maybe this isn't a conversation you want to have right now. But as a leader, you're going to have to step up, get uncomfortable with that and step into it. OK, so um, you want to be really thinking about why do I want to be visible? OK. What are the benefits to me? Okay. And where is it going? So ask yourself those three questions. Why do I want to be visible? Okay. What does it mean to me? And where is it going? Because once you're clear on those things, you know, the path starts, but then, you know, other issues could come up for you. And I'm not going to dive too deeply into this in this session, but it could be things like, well, you know, I have low self-esteem or people have shot me down before. There's been a lot of judgment. I'm not going to make enough money. Um, you know, I'm not good enough. Um, <clears throat> when you're stepping into your leadership, and I think what I'll do is I'm going to do another, another podcast on stepping into your leadership and, you know, talking about, um, maybe uh, recognizing what's getting in your way. I think that's an important subject to talk about uh, for leadership. Um, you know, I, I think it's really important for you to understand um, that until you decide you want to be visible, people will actually start to see you. Okay. Cause that's the energy of what you're putting out there as a leader. Okay. And in your business and everybody, and I've said this and Barb said it too, you know, everybody's a leader. If you're breathing and talking to another human being, you're leading. OK, because you're giving them a message and you're listening to their message and that's leading. OK, whether it's an opinion or conversation, something casual, it doesn't matter. OK, so think about this. If you think you're not a leader, go around and ask, ask people, your peers what what they think of you as a person. That will give you the clue. OK, so back to visibility. So uh, so I want you to be willing to be visible. OK, and then that is more on the, you know, mental, emotional, spiritual, you know, uh, physical side. So be visible, be willing to be visible. And the other part of that is if you feel you're being judged by other people, then you need to check in and make sure that what you're doing still resonates with you. Because if your why is strong enough, that stuff is not going to matter. OK, so make sure you're being uh, you're willing to be visible. OK, and all the other stuff will fade away. Just keep focused on what you're doing. Somebody wants what you have. OK, and as a leader, it's your job to get it out there, offer it to people and help others to do the same. OK, and if you think it's not your job, then you're seriously misguided. <laughs> OK, um, the fact of the matter is we all are working with others. You know, I, you know, I was on this podcast. I'm going to get off on a tangent here for a minute. I was doing a, a, a room on Clubhouse last night in my Leadership Warriors room, and we were talking about how important is money as a part of your leadership. And I, I don't want to get into that subject, but the thing that I talked about were the four levels of wealth, okay? And if you think of a reverse pyramid like this, okay, and the bottom level is actually money. So money is the lowest vibration. And I think what I'll do is I'll do another podcast around this and go a little bit in depth about it. Um, so it, it's something, it's the thing we use the most on the physical plane. I mean, I paid for something six times yesterday when I was shopping, right? Like it's just something we need in our everyday lives to generate our lives, right? On a physical level. 
Um, the second level is relationships. Okay. So relationships, how you interact with others, how you co-create, how you collaborate, right? How you integrate them into your life because we can't survive without relationships on some level. That's just, you know, have you ever seen that, that, uh, show, uh, last man on earth. It's a really interesting show. So just, he's the last guy on earth. Right. And he's like, he's slowly going crazy because there are no other humans. Right. Um, and so, you know, he tries to have this relationship with these inanimate objects, which is not as good as a human being, but at least it's something. Right. And so it's just a really interesting point of view to think about. So the third level is knowledge. So knowledge is, um, it can be everything from, you know, learning, teaching, uh, life experience, self-growth, okay? And then that leads you into the fourth level of wealth, which is spirituality. And I'm not talking woo-woo. Spirituality in the sense of connecting and knowing that you are living your divine purpose, okay? And that is what resonates with your soul, okay? So the four levels of wealth, money, relationships, knowledge, and spirituality. I want you to be thinking about this because um, <clears throat> when you are building your business as a leader, most people, and I've done it myself, and I, I can tell you about all my experiences, I, I got really good at the top three. I was missing out on the bottom level. So I had to go back and fix that problem. Okay. And so I, even though I know we're talking about how to be more visible in social media circles or groups, it's important to, for you to understand why you need the four levels of wealth and how that gets you more comfort in being visible. Okay. So I kind of went off on a tangent, but I think it's important to go over that. Okay. So now you're, you're gung ho, you're ready to go. Okay. So let's talk about LinkedIn first. So for LinkedIn, it's much more of a corporate profile. Um, so there are a few things you can do when, um, so first of all, join groups and participate in them, like them, comment them. There are different um, things for um, LinkedIn that you can use that will do that uh, for you that are assistance. I use Dripify, okay? I'm not receiving any money for that ad. Um, I should, but hey. Um, but I wanted to give that to you. So Dripify is probably the best one that I've seen. Okay, there's a cost per month, but it does everything automated for you. And then you can take it from there once you get the contacts and the engagement, offline so that you can have a conversation to see where the business or collaboration is going to go from there. So really important to like and comment. Okay. So likes aren't always seen in LinkedIn um, as something, you know, um, that's going to generate um, visibility for you. So it's more comments and posts. Okay. Now posts, I've done a couple of different ways for LinkedIn. I've done videos. Okay. And um, you can also now apply uh, to do live LinkedIn. So you have to fill out an application and they have to look at your application. Okay. So I'm not sure of the link for that, um, or I'd send it to you, but, um, you can Google it, um, live LinkedIn. <clears throat> okay. Um, the other thing is create polls. So for instance, for leadership, for me, I'd create a poll. What's your biggest challenge in leadership, making money, A, B, C, or D. This is going to get people engaged and produce the results and comment about the results. Videos, okay? Do a set of videos um, on whatever your topic is, post them once every week or once every couple of weeks. You wanna hold on to those as long as you can because they're kind of golden. Those get the most visibility. Wouldn't make it more than two to three minutes, okay? And make sure that you're using subtitles on the bottom, okay? Because if someone's on their phone and they can't have the sound on, at least they can read what you're saying. But they like the idea of the video much more than reading something. Articles. So create your articles. So what I did is I made all my videos and then I transcripted them all into Otter AI. That's a transcriptor I use. And I created the articles from that. So then I'll take a part or a portion of the article and put it as a post. The whole thing is too big, right? Because people lose attention like that. Okay. That's going to start to get you visibility. And you know, you can do it a couple times a week. Some people say post every day. I, honestly, I don't have that kind of time. And I pay somebody to do my social media now, whereas before I had to do it myself. Um, <clears throat> but you know, the fact of the matter is on LinkedIn, you're going to be uh, connecting more professionally. So make sure that your posts are more professional than personal. 
Okay. There still can be a bit of you in there, but make sure that you know what, um, that you've got that connotation going on. Okay. LinkedIn, there are 750 million people on LinkedIn. It is the number one um, business social platform out there right now. Okay. So what piece of that 750 million do you want? Okay. And as a leader, you want a big piece of that. Okay. All right. Next, let's talk about Facebook. Facebook is more of an older demographic. I don't use it as much anymore. Um, I find it to be more of a social platform um, or a place that I can sell items that are a little bit cheaper. For business, yes, I generated some of my business for my courses on it. Um, and I think the one thing I love the most about Facebook are two things. So first of all, the groups and the pages you can create. So those, um, you know, I've got someone posting for me, you know, daily on those things because I just don't have the time to do it. But I mean, post two, two, two three times a week, you know, post once, you know, about yourself, a personal post, the rest can be about business. Don't sell anything, right? What you want to do is you want to get people engaged offline and just say, you know what? And a way to do this too is it's, I've got this free item. If you want one, just DM me and then, you know, send them the free product and then follow up with them and just say, Hey, did you try it? What'd you think? It's really just a conversation because I think sometimes, you know, again, we get into the, the bank codes that we talked about the previous few weeks, right? You really have to tune in and see what people's codes are and what their values are to have a proper conversation with them. So until you do start asking some quick, some key questions, what'd you think of that? What'd you think of that product? I'd love to hear because I'm getting everybody's opinion. Not sure if I want to go forward with it. Right. So what else do you use? So tell me a little bit about what you do. That's really interesting. Can you tell me more about that? Why do you think that? You see how I just engaged the conversation as I went along. So when you're engaging with people, that's what you want to do. Keep asking key questions to get enough information to move the conversation to finding out what their pain point is and moving it from there to see if there's some collaboration. Maybe it's not the type of person for you, but you can put them in your referral network and maybe someone will come up. I've done this so many times uh, where their service isn't for me, but I know someone else who can use it. Okay. That's just as powerful as them making the sale to you. In fact, it's more powerful. Okay. All right. So Facebook groups, again, engage in them as much as you can. Oh my gosh, my hair. Um, you know, um, be, be present. And the thing that's going to get you attention on Facebook are the, are the loves, the likes, no, the heart is the one that you want to be doing. So heart everything, right? That's going to get you more engagement and that's going to get you more visibility in that algorithm. Now that is changing constantly. So I can't speak to anything else has changed. Um, but I know that's how I use Facebook. Um, and you know, I am as a good way to reach out to people personally. I don't do it to spam people for, um, for products and stuff like that. And you know, one thing I didn't talk about LinkedIn is how to engage people on messaging. We don't have enough time um, but I'm, I'm using Dripify for all of that. So I suggest you check that out. Okay. Cause I want to cover a couple of the other platforms. Um, okay. So that's Facebook. Um, and you know, uh, I'm very, I, I'm, I have a good balance of business. I have a business page for my business. Not everybody does that. It's up to you. Um, some people use their personal pages, their business page, and that's fine too. I have a couple groups, people who work with me. It's in a, it's in a private group. Only those people have access. We do all sorts of things in there. And then I have a, a bigger group where I put everybody into and I can advertise my courses from there and everybody can con have a conversation. Uh, you know, we can chat, there can be networking, there can be all sorts of things. So use Facebook as a tool to, um, you know, grow your business, grow your groups, engage with people. This is really the key, right? This is where we want to engage and create those, you know, trusted partner relationships. Okay, third one I'm going to talk about today. I'm not really going to talk about YouTube because I really only use YouTube for posting my videos. Um, I don't engage in really any marketing there. That's not my niche. Um, so maybe at some time in the future, um, but it's it's all there, right? Um, okay, so the next thing, uh, the next platform I want to talk about is uh, in, uh, so Twitter, so Twitter, uh, uh, people post for me on Twitter. I don't post on Twitter very much. Um, I like it cause it's short, it's sweet and you can get your point across. So make sure when you're working on Twitter that whatever you're saying 
And that short 50 character or whatever it is, is impactful. Because if it's not impactful, people will not pay attention. Okay, so you really need to uh, be smart about how you use Twitter. Okay, um, the next one I want to talk about is a combo. So the first one is Clubhouse. It's a newer one. Clubhouse is basically talk radio. And as a leader, this is a huge opportunity for you to step into your leadership. If you're not comfortable talking on stage, it's only voice, there's no video or anything like that, or you're not comfortable having your own room, get into rooms that um, are about what you do, uh, subjects you like, um, and raise your hand, you'll see the little icon in there and get up on stage. Again, this is part of being visible. Okay, get up on stage. And there are a lot of things you can do to contribute to the conversation. And if they're just asking if anybody has any questions, get up there and say, hey, I do this like this in my business. How do you guys do it? I'd love to hear from the experts, right? And this will allow you to get more followers, which is a really good thing. People will follow you, you follow them back. It's all about the engagement on Clubhouse, right? But the fact of the matter is you get also great visibility, okay? And you have an opportunity to fill out your profile and connect up your Clubhouse with your Instagram and your Twitter, okay? Those are the two platforms it will attach with. You know, on, on Clubhouse, you also have a back channel, which is like a chat, okay? And allows you to connect with others behind there as well right? And you can take it offline. Now, the beauty of this is it connects up with your IG or your Instagram, where you could um, have a free offering and post that in your Instagram link, click on my Instagram link below. And um, you'll have, you know, if you click on my free three day challenge, um, you'll have access to that no obligation at all. Okay, I just want to really help you. And the opportunity too is to tell people to connect with you on Instagram, shoot me a DM because in Instagram now they have chat. Okay, now watch your Instagram because um, you you have people who are requests who are general uh, and um, I think it's uh, a general chat and then there's a uh, another chat. I can't remember what it, it uh, I guess it's more the visible chat or the primary chat. That's what it's called primary. Everybody should go in primary unless you're not really talking to those people. Okay. And keep an eye on that because it's sneaky. They don't advise you about that. You got to keep an eye on that. Okay. And same with the um, uh, requests in clubhouse, make sure under the back chat that you're looking that there are no requests because I had a whole bunch of those in there and I didn't realize. So basically I'm going to start wrapping up now. Uh, time goes so fast in the morning. Um, basically I think it's really key to use social media as a tool. You know, sometimes you can get down in the weeds where you want to do all the trainings about how to get millions of followers and blah, 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 and the techniques to use in this and that really it's an individual thing. I think listening to those trainings is great, but it's really what it's, resonates with you. That's really important here. And you guys, you guys need to be doing what resonates with you. And as leaders, the longer you do this, the more you're going to figure it out, especially when new things come in and really listen to that because, you know, I started taking social media trainings in, uh, I think it was Instagram and I'm like, and it was, it was a three hour train. I'm like, I don't have time for this. Right. Honestly. And I'm not going to be doing it. I know how to use it if I need to and connect with people, but the person I pay to do my social media is going to be doing it. So why am I taking this throughout? Of course, yeah, I'll get more knowledge, but am I going to have the time to apply it? So I really had to think about that. I'm not saying you shouldn't or shouldn't. Maybe you're starting out and you need to know that. So you should do it. But for me, you also as a leader need to know where your time is best spent. Okay. Use social media as a tool, as I said, to engage with people, create those trusted partner relationships build your business and create that income you're looking for. And what's going to happen when you create that income, you're going to ripple that out into the world and help more people create more income. Is everybody seeing how this works here? Okay. So it's a, it's a really essential part of your business. Make sure you give it the attention it needs and know that if you do this properly, um, you can explode your business and skyrocket it. Um, and not just your business, your leadership, because when people see what you are doing, they're going to follow what you're doing because it's working. Okay. That's why these social media gurus have millions of people following them. They know what they're doing. They've done it right. So do what's good for you. Okay. So that's it for this week. I just want to put a little promo out for my leadership warriors, um, room on clubhouse. Come join me where there's, uh, usually most weeknights at 7 PM Eastern. 
Um, and I also run the Impact to Income Room, uh, so where we talk about how to make an impact to create more income. Lots of subjects on that too. But Leadership Warriors is my passion. Join me on Clubhouse. Um, just come in, look look up my name, and then follow me, and you'll see whenever I come on with a room, you'll see when the rooms are, and come and join us in the conversation. We'd love to have you contribute to that. So my name is Laura Armstrong. My company is Leadership with Laura. You can check me out at leadershipwithlaura.com or email me at laura at leadershipwithlaura.com. I'd love to hear from you. And I've got a little surprise coming for you guys. My uh, three-day leadership uh, freebie is coming up. So I'm going to be offering that to you guys um, probably by next week. I think it'll be ready to go. Um, and that's a great training, three days. All right. So in those three days, you're going to learn who you would be, what it would look like if you were the world champion of your business as a three-time world champion. I know what that feels like and I want it for you. The second day, you're going to start uh, recognizing what's getting in your way, those roadblocks that are stopping you from success. And the third day, we're going to talk about where you are now. So now you have a clear path to your success and what it looks like and what might be getting in your way and how to dissolve those roadblocks. So that's a little bit about the three-day challenge. I'm not going to give you any more uh, until it's ready to go. And we'll put the link up next week. Guys, have a great week. I'll talk to you all soon. I hope today really helped. And join me next week when we're going to talk about um, a little bit more deeper on LinkedIn. So how to be more visible as a leader on LinkedIn. I did talk a little bit about it today. So posting and engagement. And I'll go a little bit deeper into Dripify for you guys as well. All right. So I'll see you then. Have a great week, everyone. And bye for now. borders with a Dominican. Her name is Serena Buffalino. They call her Mrs. Right B, and, and her class always begins with a pledge. Right. Something local, something, something global. Haiti. They're words that carry yes. weight here. Helping yourself means helping others, giving back, here and a world away in Haiti. And nobody's helping them, except for people like us. It was through her the class learned of Haiti, of the nearly one million orphans, many with no school, no support, no Mrs. B in their lives. They could not wrap their head around that. Mrs. B's students are among Toronto's most at risk. Their challenges vary from emotional and behavioral difficulties to learning disabilities. Their trauma so severe they can't function in a regular school setting, and we aren't allowed to show most of their classmates. For most of the kids, um, most of society has turned them away. And in this classroom, they're accepted. They're accepted no matter what for who they are. Take Yolanda. She came here last year so burdened and withdrawn. She would often fall silent, sometimes for days on end. It was, she says, Mrs. B's patience, her quiet encouragement that saved her. She actually saves people's lives from dangers. And perhaps that's why these marginalized kids feel such a kinship with the orphans of Haiti and why they were moved to act. And so when, when Yolanda and Jackie and Patrick said, well, Miss B, we need to build them a school. Build a school. No easy task. They started out raising money. They sold samosas, washed cars, screened movies, you name it. And in just a few months, this little class raised $20,000. So much, it's not just a one-room schoolhouse they can build, but a full three-story school. And so Mrs. B set off on a journey she dreamed of, up into the dusty mountains above Port-au-Prince to a town called Canaan. It's home to thousands of earthquake refugees who live with no running water, no electricity, and no school until now. The first step was a temporary school. It's up and running. 53 students already in uniform. The permanent school for 250 is growing from its foundations. It makes me want to cry because it's, it's just, I, she just awes, it makes me feel so awed and, um, and I'm very proud of her. All of this because of a handful of students back in Canada and Mrs. B, the teacher who believed in them. These are for you. At another fundraiser, a special tribute to the students, accepted by someone 
who without Mrs. B might not be here. They believe in me and I believe in them and together we not only change our lives but we change the world around us. For inspiring great things and seeing the potential in everyone, Serena Buffalino is this week's Everyday Hero. today or what welcome everybody everybody i know i wasn't here earlier and we had to bring our wonderful amazing expert that comes on every thursday and that's miss laura armstrong and i was okay laura i got you know i'm i'm open and i say what i feel and all that stuff that's what this show's about first of all i'm going to have to hire you to introduce me when you do social media because you know that's one of my expertise. And I was getting all excited. I was like, she's saying visibility. Yes. Getting to know you, getting to know pain points of people. Oh my God. I mean, I was like, she said this. Yes. Check, 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 check. She was on it. She was on it. The only thing that I was thinking about was like, she, <laughs> I said, I wonder who's doing her social media. Well, I have somebody doing my social. I'm like, dang. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. There's a lot of people doing that. Um, you know, myself. I started doing that seven months ago. And one of the things that I tell people, my mission, my mission in life, as, as you want to call it, is to help women and men get their visibility. And that comes from having these TV streaming shows that I do, you know, doing one-on-one -on -one interviews and also really upping your social media game. And I, I train on that. I mean, I train on that. I, I do other people's posts. I, I am a, a social media manager and all that good stuff. So when Laura was talking about that, I was like, you're in my field house, lady. And she is so right. Her being the expert as a leader and a communication person, she hit it right on the head. If you're talking to somebody, if you're basically pouring into somebody's life, just be just one sentence. You can say one word and you're being a leader. You're being a leader in the world. And I want people to understand that because a lot of times people be like, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm, stop it. Stop it. And another thing I want people to stop, you know, I'm on a roll now, <laughs> is to stop, is to make sure your visibility is there because you're helping people move to the next level in life. I always tell people you are saving lives of others through your stories, through you showing up, through you saying certain things, through your knowledge. And expertise. That's what Laura's always talking about. That's why I'm always saying get that communication, be it as if you had to do it on audio, if you're not really, you know, you're like, ah, the video's kind of, that's okay, do audio. There's so many other ways to get yourself out there and to make sure people understand that you are there for them. Like I said, everybody's not going to work with me. Everybody's not going to work with Laura. Everybody's not going to work with my special guests coming on. But there's always somebody out there that you can work with. But you had to get yourself out there so they know who you are, right? It makes sense. Right. So, Lord, thank you. Another wonderful show, as always, lady. I truly, truly appreciate you. And thank you for bringing up my favorite subject. <laughs> and we will see her every Thursday. Please chime in. Tune in. You'll see a lot of promos. In fact, I'm going to hype it up even more starting next week we need to get the diamond factor experience show in there so people know that oh we come up every day yeah i'm on every day bringing you information knowledge awareness all education all that good stuff for you so what she, what you can do is to get to the next level in your life and that's what it's all about is helping each other being a team a team player it's not about i know the show is a diamond Factor experience with barbara beckley but I always say with experts and special guests, because they make the show. These individuals that come on make the show. And we are about to get royalty in the house now. I have, oh my God, I have a celebrity. Yes, a real celebrity. Barbara's getting up there. I keep telling you, keep watching me. You're going to be like, you're going to be like, what happened? Yeah, Barbara just went to the next level. 
<laughs> with her show. And I'm loving that I can bring on so much talent on this show so you can understand that you can do the same thing if you put your mind to it and if you work towards it. Now, the one thing I always like when I interview people is to really understand their backstory because we all just didn't come out say, boop, here I am, I'm a wonderful producer, <laughs> actor and all this stuff. No, it took time, effort and hard work to get into the next level. And you already, you've seen, I put a few little nuggets out there of the person I'm bringing on. So Mr. Matthew, oh my God, he's a multi, multi now. What is multi? Get the definition of multi. That's a lot, more than one award-winning director, actor, and producer. Triple threat, triple threat. And he's an American filmmaker. You know, he started at the age of 15. No excuses. <laughs> the first thing when I seen that in his bio, I said, well, I need to check off excuses and say goodbye <laughs> because there is none. So all you young people out there, because he's older now, you're going to see that, but he's still much more handsome. <laughs> but you understand that he started that age. And there's no excuse to say, well, I got to wait till I get 20, 21. I got to do a few things here and there. No, no, no. He started at 15. So you're going to hear more of his story. I don't want to take that from him. We're going to have we're going to have a conversation with him. All people always say, oh, you're interviewing somebody. I said, no, I have conversations with people so we can get to know that person. You'll get to know where to you know reach him and everything. But right now, I want you to get to know the man, the myth and the legend. So here we go. But I can't bring on the celebrity just like say, ta-da, here he is. I got to do it in the right style. So here we go. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Matthew. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me on today. I'm so excited and really feel the positive energy and just so excited to be here. Thank you so much. Well, you know, I'm more excited due to the fact that this has been prolonged because <laughs> like I said, I'm open and honest and yeah. it's all my fault. <laughs> I'm just going to put it out there. But um, just you being who you are and being so gracious to say, okay, Barbara, I can do it. I can fit you in my schedule in September. <laughs> I, I couldn't miss it for the world. So excited. I am too. Like, I, I was just telling the ladies, I said, you need to see this show because Matthew's coming on. They said, Matthew, I said, he's a producer and an actor and he's just a nice guy. And they like, oh my God, yeah, you need to come on. I said, did I tell you that he's a celebrity? <laughs> <laughs> but but thank you so much, Matthew, for coming on on the Diamond yes. Factor Experience show. Um, as I said earlier, this is a show basically to get to know the special guests and understand and get the visibility out there. So I really believe in that. As you can see, I get so excited when I talk about visibility yeah. <laughs> and just get because that's the thing. I mean, people won't know you unless you're not, you know, saying things are out there. So, yeah. So I was I was looking at your bio and then I brought up last night a video of all your like your videos what you do for yeah you know, you're directing stuff and i was like oh my god <laughs> I, said, I said he has been doing some things and at the age of 15 congratulations Thank that, you. Thank i you. love it i love it you are such a motivation piece for the young people i mean in that area so you can let them know that you know they can do that. So enough of me because I, I can mean I can be talking and talking. talking. <laughs> this is all about you. <laughs> this is all about you. So first, Matthew, I always ask. You know, like I said earlier, we just don't get started in this kind of stuff. Like I was right, just right. boom, and I was this TV TV streaming show that I'm doing. Yeah. I mean, it took a lot. I mean, I was a very shy person. I don't know if you knew that, but <laughs> very shy. I was. <laughs> and I, and I know people think I make that up, but I I don't. <laughs> it's, it's, it's true. I, I was I was a very shy individual. Um, and I'm glad that I busted out finally. <laughs> yeah. 
But um, I want to know from you, you know, kind of like you said, age of 15, like I said, but yeah. where did you kind of just get this, you know, that you wanted to be to, to this point in your life? So it started off in high school. Um, well, more so middle school, I was making videos on Facebook. I uh, started off making like videos of me playing the guitar. And then eventually when I hit ninth grade in high school, I started making, you know, videos, me playing video games. And I didn't think anything much of it until my mom ended up buying me a camcorder one year for Christmas. Um, and me and my best buddy, uh, we decided, you know, let's let's make something of it. So we put together our own short film. It was ninth grade, tenth grade, uh, Nerf guns, no budget, nothing at all. And we just had a lot of fun. Um, it's actually still on YouTube now. It's called Intense Battles. It was like a three part, ten ten minute film. And we we're just having a lot of fun. And we were like, you know what? This is this is pretty cool walking away with the explosions on the camera and stuff. It was pretty cool. So we stuck with it and um, we are where we are now. It just, it just took a lot of time, patience, and just eventually just uh, the whole mission, you know, for the, you know, my, the brand that I started, uh, Uranium Films, because I know a lot of people pronounce it Ryanium Films. Um, so Uranium Films, it's called. Um, the whole mission of that, you know, I started when I was younger, just to have fun making films. And over time, it just turned into something a lot deeper than that. Uh, growing up, having this passion for videos and just making videos in general, um, I realized that it's, a, it's really hard for people to get themselves out there. And unless you make your own content, you know, and really push for yourself to get out there, it's really difficult. So the whole mission now for this brand is just to give other people the opportunity to showcase their talent on, you know, this platform. And, you know, if you're a music artist, you know, we'll put your music in there. If you're another filmmaker trying to get started, just like I did at 15, you know, we welcome all skill sets, any experience. And we're just, you know, we're just here to have fun. That's the, uh, that's the overall goal. Wow. You know, well, a lot to unpack here, but I, first of all, just I'm glad, see, this shows me at a young age and when you have wonderful parents that sees the potential and starts giving you little things to get you, get you heightened into maybe what you're going to do when you get older. You know, when you said that your mother gave you the, you know, the, the little yeah. camcorder and stuff and you just started, you know, just loving it, seeing that this was something of maybe a passion of yours, you and your friend. And 15, you just kind of said, let's just make this. Let's just do this. Have fun. And it sounded like you were just having fun. And you created this, this video <laughs> yeah. that popped up and got your juices flowing, it sounded like, to that point. And I like how you talked about, too, that a lot of people, and I always run into people, too, like, well, I don't want to be on video. I don't look the part. You know, all that kind of stuff. I was you like know that. you hear that. And you, you was like, I can't believe you was like that, Matthew. You was really like that. <laughs> Really? <laughs> Believe it or not, my first, my first few videos, every time I, you know, was editing it, I was like, man, I really don't like the way my voice sounds in this. Let me re-record it. I don't like the way I look in this. But now it's just, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> it's funny. We get to get to, oh, I don't like the voice or I don't look right or, oh, my shirt is not right. Yeah, that's exactly how it is. People come from or yeah. my glasses don't look like. And then all of a sudden, as time goes by, you're like, it is what it is. Hey, yeah. hi, how you doing? You know, yeah. <laughs> and I think, and maybe you can um, attest to this too. Maybe is that it gets to a point when you, when your passion and your purpose in life is so strong that you know everything. The little, I'm not I hate to say the little things, but the things that you know don't really matter too much right. kind of moves to the side, and you're like, okay, there's a bigger purpose here, and I need to show up. You know, and and right. and, and I think that's what you have done. Like I said, I've seen a lot of the videos and the pictures that you were in as being a director, a producer of, of the certain shows that you've done. And you have showed up, Matthew. I mean, I, I'm i telling you, I was blown away. I was like, oh my God, how did I get to this? And I have to thank Kimberly, <laughs> Kimberly <laughs> for this, because she's the one that introduced me to you. I mean, your family. Yeah. And I'm getting her on the show too. I, also, I want to really, I want to surprise you and have her come, but I know she was busy. Oh, but um, I'm so glad that she introduced me to you 
because, you know, just showing how you show up, what you do as all, like I said, you're a triple threat. I mean, you're director, <laughs> producer, and, you know, you, you act. So with all those three, Matthew, how do you kind of juggle that? I was just going to ask you. So it's, it's not easy. <laughs> um, so currently I work a full-time job and I, you know, just working at my full-time day job and then coming, coming back home to sit on my computer and then be like, okay, I have requests to make films, like edit people's films. It's, it's, it's rough. So it's just a lot of time management. Um, like as soon as I come from my day job, I come home, I go on my computer first thing, do what I have to do. Takes a couple hours, maybe get a couple hours of sleep every night. Um, then trying to maintain, you know, my relationship, you know, just relationships in general. Um, but over time, um, just, just incredibly, you know, thankful for the opportunities that I've had over time, especially meeting certain people um, along the way, which helped build that resume um, that I have now. Um, in terms of just juggling everything, I would say it is a lot of time management. It's not easy. And I hope that whoever sees this video that, you know, it would be an inspiration that, you know, doesn't matter the age, you know, I'm nowhere where I want to be now, but I am grateful for I am now, but it doesn't matter the age that you can get started. Uh, as long as you have the passion and drive to, you know, stay up those late nights, edit a film, maybe on a weekend when you have all from your day job during the week, go out to the city and film a couple, uh, you know, film a movie for, you know, a few hours and then come home, try to spend some time with your family. You know, it's just a lot of that. And, uh, you know, I'm just looking at the long term, the bigger picture. It's a lot of a lot of uh, time sacrifice now, but I know in the long run, hopefully, you know, main priority priority now is just reaching out um, to especially the younger audience, making sure you know, uh, just want them to be motivated and and just see this as an opportunity to to uh, to just work on their passion. And if that if that guy can do it, I can do it also. Yes. And like I said earlier, Matthew, you are giving hope. You're like, I always say you read the lighthouses of the world. So you give that light to others. You really do um, to say, you know what? He can do it. He worked hard. He grind. He grind. Maybe I, if I do something similar, or I go to school or whatever need to be need to be done, that I can get to that level in my life, too. So you give them that hope. You give them that light, that little light that sometimes you're in the dark. And you're like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. And then you see Matthew and you be like, OK. He did it. He's telling me the way. Maybe I could do it too. So yeah, I, I'm loving that, man. Now you, you you said some things that me and you are in the same boat because I do have a day job too. Yes. And then as soon as that's over with, it's like bing straight to my business, straight <laughs> oh, to what yeah. I do here. And it, it's it's more than a notion. <laughs> Tell that's people true. I'm not going to sit there and be like, oh, we just you know you know. I mean, yeah. some days, but. It's, it's, it's some work you have to. And then trying to get, like you said, what you say, yeah. sleep. <laughs> is that even a, is that even a thing? Some, some days I come home and I'm just like, Oh, I gotta, <laughs> gotta edit again. But you know what? I love it. And just like you love this, you know, and I'm the impact that you have in the community that watches your, your content, even me watching it, you know, it's working. So that's all we can do. Just Thank you so much. keep working, you know, and we got to work together. You know, I always say, I mean, we have our own individual businesses and lanes. I get that. I understand that. But I love how, you know, it, I'm able to bring all the other experts and people in like yourself as a special guest and stuff and say, come on, let's share this platform Absolutely. and let's build it together and then help others out there instead of being in your own island. I, I can't yeah. stand that. I hate when people say, well, I'm just going to be over here doing my little thing. Oh. I'm like. I don't like that at all. <laughs> There's a lot of people like that. And with the film industry and with just things in general that I noticed, you know, uh, going through it is there's a lot of people that are in these, you know, these types of industries for themselves. And they have a lot of knowledge that they don't really want to share. I, a quick story. I remember, I remember there was a set that I walked on you know, from the blue, saw a couple film trucks there. And, you know, it was me and my fiance. We, we, we drove 
I when I see when I see a film going on, I know it. You see the big trucks, you see yes. the food, you see everything. I saw the cones. So I was like, <laughs> well, let's just park here. Um, and I'm just gonna take a walk over there, just see what's going on, see if maybe I can, you know, meet somebody or get my name out there. And that's what I did. So I remember there being a couple of, you know, I don't I'm not sure if they were production assistants or actors. And me being my curious self, I uh, I asked one of them. So, listen, my name is Matthew. I'm 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 trying to get to your level. Uh, how did you do it? Just 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 out of curiosity. And the guy that I asked told me, "Screw off. Figure it out on your own." I got to where I am now, and I'm not sharing that information <laughs> with anybody. Oh, no. There's a, I'm realizing there's, you know, and I just don't want to be that. When I when I felt that experience for the yes. first time, yeah. and that really hit me, I was like, man, if if I was hit, is hit in his shoes, the last thing I would want to do is, you know, tell somebody that, you know, I want to be able to share and help other people. And that's where the, you know, the mission for me became a little more personal. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, you know, I learned from that experience yes. um, that I want to be able to share the knowledge that I have. Mm-hmm. So for the people that do take it, great. Hopefully it works for them. For the people that don't, then that's okay too. But I just want to be able to share what I learn along the way because I know, or I hopefully I, you know, it would help somebody you know, grow and uh, expand their knowledge and, you know, work towards the goal that they want. Yeah. I am so glad you have just such a kind heart, Matthew. I'm glad that you seen that at the beginning, because like you said, when people close like that closed door, um, especially for somebody that's young too, I I don't know, this is a key point for me. If there's somebody, you know, I'm older, well, I'm older than, (laughs) much older than you, but, um, I always say to myself, if I can take the nuggets that I've learned and spread them along the youth, to me, that just puts a smile on my face and my heart. Right. Because hopefully that's helping them get to that level that they want to get to. Not shutting the door. You know, well, well, said I did it, so now you got to learn the same way I do. Ha, ha, ha. I'm yeah. like, really? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> but I'm glad that you've seen that and said, you know what? I want to do the opposite of that. When I get to a point where, like right now, you're in celebrity status, like right now, I want people to understand that I'll be there to help you. If you want to have a, I call it an informational interview. And, and, and I'm just to put right. put it out there to everybody yeah. else. That's really important. You don't, you know, you can get the knowledge from people just saying, hey, I look at you as a mentor. I see you, Matthew, is doing your thing. Can we have like maybe a 15 minute informational interview with you so I can just understand so I can move where I need to go? And I think a lot of people might um, really appreciate that because they see that you see, you know, that they see you as that expert. Um, So uh, just to give just a little just a little tip, you know, just for the listeners out there, too, that, you know, reach out to I mean, Matthew's I mean, a little bit more time, but reach out to Matthew. And he like he said, he's willing to talk and you never know. You might be. um, Maybe an actor, actress, or something. Always looking for people. Yeah, you <laughs> never know. Always. Flow always. Into that. <laughs> <laughs> always looking for actors, actresses. Um, always. <laughs> yeah. Now, Matthew, I was going to ask you because I've seen some of the movies that you kind of do look like police type of thing and action, which I love action packed movies. And those My movies. favorite. I love them. Love them. Um, but can, give us a little, um, just a little background of where you got to that. Because I know sometimes, you know, certain actors and directors have yeah. certain type of movies they do. So what right. made you get to that? So, okay. Um, I loved. So growing up, I loved Transformers. I loved all the action movies. I one of my favorite actors is Jason Statham. One, of, he was he's, he's a great actor. He I would watch. I watched all his movies. And growing up watching that, I was like, man, that would be really cool if I can just put myself in that situation, just kind of like be like the next James Bond and just you know do all that cool stuff. So when I made that first film with my with my best friend he he's actually the co-founder with me with uh, the brand Ranium films and yell uh, we I kind of envisioned myself in that situation the graphics are really cheesy at the time so it's out there intense battles uh, I actually remade that film recently called intense battles reloaded uh, it's on Amazon Prime but um 
that just just seeing the action that's my favorite genre i just loved all the explosions and all that stuff this was really cool so i kind of stuck with that uh, i feel like you know just in general just action maybe thriller um that's that's like i feel like that's my my what i what i feel most comfortable with um but just in general growing up seeing all those movies and especially transformers and those are my favorites. So I just wanted to kind of put myself in that, those, you know, those characters shoes and be like, man, you know, I just fought a big giant robot today that, you know, how, how was your day? You know? So, um, but other than that, uh, we, I'm trying to, I'm working on expanding the genres that I do. So normally I do a lot of action, maybe some thriller, but I'm trying to expand on, my you know just different genres trying to trying out different things um like i just did a drama called wrong place wrong time uh with the director jose and we worked on that i mainly edited the film but just overall just trying to branch out and just seeing where you know i feel most comfortable working on and uh yeah just overall saw a lot of movies growing up and I just wanted to be a, you know, feel like I was a part of that community. And that's where it all started. Just love the action thriller. And that's, that's my main thing. <clears throat> that's one thing I love. I love um, <clears throat> thriller movies too. Um, definitely. Um, that's another thing. Port Circle. Some of the biggest things of advice that they've given me that I want to give to others, especially at such a young age group, uh, and through experience so far, um, eight being, being your age and trying to make films, especially you have to work really hard at it. That's number one. And the reason why that's important is because since you're so young, a lot of people aren't going to instantly take you seriously. That's just, that was a given for me. No one really took me seriously in the beginning until I made that film. I helped that film. I edited that film and it won awards for best tra you know, trailer and, and best film. Then that's when they started taking me seriously. Like, okay, that guy, he's serious. So number one rule that I have is just take yourself seriously, especially as a young, a younger actor, actress, producer however you know whatever skill set you have take yourself seriously and and just show that in your work because that's the only way to really gain the respect that you want in this industry and just in life in general from what i've from what i've realized uh the second thing is <clears throat> if you're trying to get into this industry i seriously advise have a backup plan have a full-time job because that's the most important thing. It's not a steady, it's not a steady industry and that's okay. You know, work comes, work goes, you get some gigs and you know, most important thing is that you come home every day and you love what you do. Cause if you don't, it's going to drive you insane. It's going to be endless hours, you know, editing films that, you know, you're stuck with. Um, but as long as you love what you do, it's, you know, it's not really work what they say. Uh, third thing is, um, most importantly, you know, keep, keep your circle, you know, have a, have a good support circle. And that's, you know, that's, that's, that's a harder one because depending on the certain person situation, you know, everyone's situation is different, but if you can just, you know, maintain a good support circle to help motivate you and push you through it, that's super helpful. And um, the fourth thing, this is probably the most important one is make your own content. Mm. I forgot about that one. Uh, make your own content. And the reason why, especially for the younger filmmakers, is that it's really, really, really hard to get into this industry. And as long as you make your own content, you'll always have your name going out there. That was my thing. Like I said, I'm nowhere where, where I want to be now, but I'm very grateful for where I am now. But because I made consistent content throughout the years, and you can see that on my resume, um, that's what kept my name, you know, out there. As long as you're not working on anything, you're not really going to get that recognition. My 
my uncle, we were having a conversation the other night and he was telling me um, one of the biggest things in life is uh, what's next. Mm. And like he was telling me, you know, there's a music artist, you know, uh, my cousin's best friend, uh, Tony. Um, he makes a ton of music mm -hmm. and, you know, it doesn't matter. So you can make tons of music. Let's say you make, for example, films. Mm -hmm. You can make 50 films. So all it takes is that one to blow up. Mm -hmm. Just like, you know, the music artist. Um, also, that's what happened with me. If you see my resume, there's 60 films on there. Um, but one of them just recently blew up. So just keep on, keep on swinging the bat. Eventually, at some point, you're gonna you're gonna you know hit a home run. It's gonna be that one. Just keep on, you know, making content, putting your name out there, and just being consistent. Consistency is the number one key for you know making films in the industry. Those are some good golden nuggets, Matthew. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I love like what you said about being around people that's going to uplift you and motivate you and be there for you. I mean, really, and I'm saying that like that, really be there for you, because I know you and I probably both, and all of us, has been, you know, you really thought one person was really there to say, hey, you're doing a good job. And then you find out that same person wasn't like the one that was the, the right one, <laughs> or they said some or did something or whatever. And you're like, really? I really thought she was in my corner. So you have to be a lot of that. You have to be very careful with that because this is, I always say, this is your baby. This is your passion. This is your love. And, you know, when people start sprouting, you know, they do that sometimes. You're like, well, Matthew, you have, don't have to stay up all night doing cutting videos. And, and, you know, in your mind, you're like, okay, I get what you're saying, but this is what I'm doing. And this is my passion. And I have to work hard. And then you went into consistency. You have to be consistent in anything. So you brought up so many good, like I said, golden nuggets for people to really think about if they're trying to do this career that you're doing or any career. Yeah. I mean, you have to, and like you said, you could be, and the other thing, a lot of people be like, well, I've been doing all this for all these years. And then all of a sudden, boom, like you said, that one thing yeah. makes it big. Absolutely. So that shows you right there that you just have to keep it moving. You got to keep doing stuff. So Matthew, this has been such a pleasure and an honor for you to be on yes, the show. Thank you. Oh my God. So I, I know I asked you, you know, to tell some things, you know, help people. But what I usually do with my guests too, I kind of go down for like maybe 20 seconds. And I just want you just to give, you know, any lasting ideas or thoughts that you have for the listeners. And then I'll come back up and we can close at that time. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, so the last thing, um, I just want to say again, thank you everyone for tuning in. Thank you, Barbara, for uh, allowing me on this show. Uh, check out uraniumfilms.com. That is uh, my company website. Um, slowly but surely uh, expanding to my new brand associated with Uranium Films. It's called Silva Pictures. Uh, the main reason for that is because when I made Uranium Films at the time, uh, I, I thought it was, it's, it's a really great name, um, but a lot of people call me Ryan because of it. <laughs> so Silva Pictures is going to be coming into the, you know, into the films eventually. So back to the point, uraniumfilms.com, become a member, sign up, it's free. Uh, message me on Uranium Films, the Instagram account. Uh, reach out to me on uraniumfilmscasting at gmail.com. Uh, if you're interested in auditioning for a film, send headshots, uh, send a reel, your resume, and let's get together. Uh, super excited to work with everybody. Again, thank you so much for uh, tuning in. Thank, thank you, you Matthew. You. I hear echoes. <laughs> that, that's probably my, my mic. But see, he just said, if you send in information, you just might get chosen. So if you don't do nothing, like I always tell people, I'd rather hear a no from somebody then not for not me to do the action to, to hear the no. And mm. I hope people understand that. That means that you did something, you took action. You said, I'm going to try to do it. I want to see what happens. And that's all you can do. And all a person can say is, well, no, not right now. I, I know some people say you're going to hear seven no's and then you hear a yes. 
So uh, you never know what's going to stuff. happen. Just do it. Just send it. Matthew's here. He just told you. You know, I always get on the Matthew. I always get on listeners. I'm like, you're always talking about, well, why can't I get this and that? I said, did you take action? Did you listen yeah. to my experts? Did you listen to my special guest? <laughs> did you get their information? <laughs> You know, stuff like that. That will kind of help get to that next level. Absolutely. So, Matthew, I would love to have you on again and work with you more. And I mean, this is going to yes. be a wonderful relationship yes. and um, a, an honor again for bringing you on the show. And again, I'll just let everybody know that if you are interested in being on the Diamond Factor Experience show, just, you know, just reach yeah. out to me and you can go to my website, www.barbarabeckley.com. It's real easy. It's my name. <laughs> you don't have to think of the diamond factor. It's just part of it. <laughs> yeah. And we can just make that happen. And, you know, you meet people just like this wonderful young man right here, Matthew. Yeah. So, Matthew, thanks mm -hmm. again. And we will see you soon. And you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much. Everyone have a wonderful rest of your day. You too, Barbara. Thank you so much. I'm hanging on your every word. The love inside, I feel it burn. I'm never fed. Way before I've had a taste, now I want more. So here we are, do you and me? I'm overwhelmed when you touch me. You talk so sweet, I hear the sound. Cause when you do, my feet won't touch the ground. Yes, yes, and yes, I told you this was going to be epic. So now what we need to do, well, what I need to do, you don't have to do it, I got to do it, is I'm going to do reposting of this interview for, from Matthew, if you didn't see it this morning. I know a lot of people are like, well, I'm in California, whatever, it's six something in the morning. You know what? There's no excuse. This is going to be reposted. You are going to see this. I want to make sure you meet Matthew through this interview. He is amazing, awesome. Th triple threat. I keep saying that. Triple threat. And a celebrity. And he has a heart of gold. He wants to help people. He wants to, you know, give that knowledge that he has. And also, he might have opportunity of being in one of his one of his epic movies that's coming out. Yes. Yes. The only thing I ask Matthew, and I do this with everybody when I'm a celebrity, just buy me a ticket. You know, when you get to that big stage and they get you and you get a Grammy or an Oscar or whatever, you know, all I ask, I don't have to even sit in the front because I know Kimberly and them are going to be there, the family. But if I'm, I'm I could be way back, you know, in the balcony somewhere, you know, I just want to be in the room. <laughs> I just want to be in the room. So, Matthew, I'm just putting a shout out there real quick. If you can just give me that ticket. I mean, I'll pay for the plane ticket, all that. All you got to do is give me the ticket. <laughs> but I truly appreciate you, Matthew. And, Lord, thank you for coming on this wonderful Thursday. We will be back tomorrow. We have our expert in finances, Mrs. Tracy Brooks. She's going to be bringing that, giving us some knowledge and some skills about upping your money. It's all about that, right? All around. What you're trying to do, it takes money. It does. I mean, you can have your knowledge and your wisdom, which you can use that to build your money. But you need some tips and tricks on how to do that. So Tracy's going to come on and tell us that. Then I have another wonderful special guest coming on that um, I'm really um, happy. She's part of the uh, Comeback Champion Conference that's coming up in October. There's like over 100 speakers that's going to be on there. There's going to be some big, talented, big, big speakers on there. And guess what? I'm a part of that, too. I'm one of going to be the one of the speakers that's going to be a part of that, um, excuse me, that conference as well. And uh, Miss Wendy, she's coming on tomorrow. She is also a part of that. So we'll be talking to her. We'll begin to know her background. She's an author. She's a speaker. She's, uh, I know she's a nurse practitioner. She has her own business. And the list goes on. The list goes on. I told you, I bring the heat. I bring the heat so you can get to know these people, know that you can do it too. This is not just, oh, they're doing their thing and I'm back in the background. No, this is you. This is me telling you that I'm always talking about your PPD, your purpose, your passion, and your drive. It's so important to have that. And that's why when I interview or when I have conversations, I like to say that, with people that I really get to know who they were before they got to a certain point. So you know that you can do it too. Like we were talking about earlier with Matthew, we're lighthouses to the world. We're saving lives. 
And people really, they be like saving lives, but I'm like, yes, you're saving lives because people, you're saving their dreams and their opportunity to say, hey, I can get to that point just like you did. So when you put yourself out there and you tell your stories and not just the good stories, I mean, you knew, I know there's been some, I know Matthew and I and everybody else been through some like, oh my God moments, but we kept it going. Like he said, be persistent, be, be constant in what you're trying to do. And if you stop, if something that really shakes you up so hard that you stop, you might have to rethink what your purpose is. Because I know one thing, there's been a lot of things hit my way this last year and this year, especially for everybody in the world, and that's the pandemic. But it didn't stop me from coming on the show. It didn't stop me to say, I need to still bring people to the show. It didn't stop me from helping, pe helping people to get their visibility out there through their social media, through interviews and stuff. It didn't stop me. In fact, it pushed me even more to say I had to grind even better so I can make sure that other individuals get what they need so people can get to know who they are. So when something even pushes you even more, that gives you an inkling. That gives you an idea that that is your purpose and you just stand on that. When everything, what I would say, when all the earthquakes and the pandemic and everything around you is going all crazy, you keep that purpose, that PPD that you have in you to push you forward. And I call that what I call it, the diamond factor. And that's in your life. So see us again tomorrow and um, eight o'clock central time. <laughs> I always do this. Nine o'clock Eastern time, what I always say, figure out all the other time zones because that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. But those two main ones I always give you so you know exactly where, where to come right here and come into the Diamond Fair Experience with Barbara Beckley, experts and special guests. And believe me, we will give you awareness, educate you, and motivate you. Talk to you soon. See you tomorrow morning.